guys, Mrs. Rainier Sin here, back for some more of The War I Finally Won. Um, we'll be reading chapter six. Let's get started. Bovril caught a mouse, Jamie yelled from down the hall. I'm glad it was a mouse, not something bigger. I jerked awake. It was morning. I was glad my bedroom door was closed. Though so mice was better than roaches or rats. I dressed quickly, butter. Downstairs, Susan was fiddling with the unfamiliar stove. Oatmeal, she asked. No, 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 I said, stuffing my arms into my coat. Susan laughed. She knows what she's up to. She told me, to put, told me the path to take to the stables and handed me a piece of bread to eat on the way. It was cold and the sun barely lit the gray woods. The air smelled like home, like hay and grass and salt from the sea. I breathed deep. I missed it so much. After a few turns, the path opened into the side road that went to the th from the Thornton house to the stables. I could see the stable cupola. I knew where I was. Fred, I yelled. And then I ran. I hadn't run much yet. I lurched and stumbled and fell out of breath, but I was running, actually running. And it was so much fun, I laughed out loud. I turned the corner into the stable yard and there was Fred. Lady Thornton's groom, lifting his cap to scratch his bald head like always. His face lit up. He held out his arms. That was good because I couldn't quite make my legs make my legs stop. I smashed straight into him. Fred laughed and swung me up into the air in a circle. And when he set me down on both feet, he kissed my cheek. We'd always been friends. He taught me how to ride and I helped him with chores. But he'd never kissed me before. Ah, last, he said taking out his handkerchief and wiping his eyes. I didn't think I'd see you so spry. I didn't think they could. What are you so happy for? Her? I thought you'd be some better, he said. Running now? Running? I didn't expect. I grinned at him. Running, I said. Oh, dear, not the little. Running, he repeated. Ah, I've missed you. It's good you're back. He took a deep breath. We've plenty of work to do. I turned toward the row of stalls. Butter! Butter tossed his yellow head over one of the open half doors. His ears flung forward. He wickered low in his throat. His eyes shone. He missed you, said Fred. We missed all you. We all missed you. <laughs> I'd never been missed before. I swallowed hard. I went to Butter and rubbed his forehead. He sniffed my hands. I said, I was afraid he'd forget me. I was afraid you both would. Not a chance, said Fred. We need you, don't we? We're, we're that glad you're back. Needed? I was needed. Is Maggie home? Her boarding school was a long way away. Soon, Fred said. She'll be happy to see you too. Not more than I'd be happy to see her. I ran my fingers through Butter's mane. Can I ride first before I start work? Fred took down my old side saddle. I shook my head. I'm going to a ride astride like Maggie, I said. I've got two useful feet now. He hesitated, grinning at me. Posh ladies ride aside. I laughed. I'm not a posh lady, I said. I'm a regular girl. Eh, you could be, Fred said. Could be a regular girl, I said. Yes, please. Fred laughed and dug Butter's old straight, side, straight saddle out of the Thornton's tack room. Our tack hadn't been bombed, but it had all been in the stable inside, beside Susan's house. Fred had it now. It was a joy to settle the saddle onto Butter's back, to tighten the girth around him, to slide the bit into his mouth and buckle the bridle around his head. A joy to hoist myself into the saddle and slide both feet into stirrups. Fred helped me lengthen the leathers. I'd grown while I was in the hospital. Fred patted Butter's neck. Not too much now, he said. You'll not, you'll not have your balance back nor your strength, and I'm counting on your help with the chores. I knew he was right. I wasn't strong yet. I wouldn't ride up my lookout hill or far into the field. I'd ride into the village and find my old friend from London, Stephen White. He'd want to see my new foot. Butter's hooves clopped against the paving stones. The winter air nipped my nose. Butter's strides made my hips sway. I breathed deep and felt myself relax. My right ankle was stiff in the stirrup. It would always be stiff no matter what, but it didn't hurt. I nudged Butter into a trot. I never had much practice posting. You didn't see... 
you didn't post the trot in a side saddle, but I understood how it should work, and after a few bounces, I found a soft rhythm. My right foot was fine as long as I didn't force my ankle down. I studied my shoulders and worked to keep my hips even. I'd always been lopsided before. Butter blew out a long breath. I scratched his shoulder. If I could stay in the saddle forever, I'd never be afraid. Stephen White lived with a very old man named Colonel McPherson in a small house on the near side of the village. I hadn't heard from Stephen while I was in the hospital, but I hadn't expected to. Sometimes I wrote to Maggie because she was away so much at school, but writing letters was still hard for me. I hadn't been reading or writing for very long. Stephen White was the first friend I ever had. When we evacuated London, he helped me escape. He was the only person besides Jamie who really understood what my old life with ma'am had been. I knew he'd be as happy as Fred to see me walking well. I drew rain in front of the colonel's cottage. Stefan always kept it neat, but now it looked forlorn, abandoned. Dried leaves blanketed the front stoop. Blackout curtains covered the windows, and I couldn't see chimney coming from couldn't see smoke coming from the chimney. The colonel chilled easily. He always kept a good fire. I dismounted and dragged Butter up the front walk. I knocked. Behind me, a flat, emotionless voice said, Ada, I didn't expect to see you. I didn't know when you were coming back. I turned. Stefan? Stefan White turned in front of me, holding the handles of a bicycle. He looked awful. His face was gray and thin, and dark circles ringed his eyes. His bony wrist stuck out from his shirt cuffs. He wore a wide, wide black armband on one sleeve. What's happened? I asked. Stefan swallowed. Lots, he said. It's good to see you. I'm leaving in the morning. I've got something for you. For Susan, really. Leaving? My dad joined the Merchant Marines. His ship signed me on as a cabin boy. Pay Hitler back, we will. What about the colonel, I said. Besides, you're not old enough to fight. Stefan shrugged. Thirteen's old enough for a cabin boy. I didn't have to lie. Dad and I are spending Christmas with my aunts in London, then we're off. I didn't know what to think. That's dangerous, I said. Hitler blew up supply ships all the time. I suppose. Stefan looked me up and down. He still didn't smile. He'd always been cheerful before. You look good, he said. The surgery went well? Yes, I said. I couldn't understand the flatness of his expression. What's wrong? I've got something for Susan, he repeated. I'm staying at the Vicar's tonight. You're in Thornton's old gamekeeper's cottage, right? Can I come come around after tea. I nodded. Butter nudged my arm. I reached up to pat him. Stefan mounted his bicycle and started away. Wait, come back, I called. He said over his shoulder, after tea. What do we think, like, could have happened? Like, I feel like he's alone, so maybe, like, he's no longer with the colonel. Um, obviously, like, he seemed very sad, so something big has happened. Let's find out. When I asked Fred about it, he shook his head. Ah, Stefan, that's a bad business, he said. Reckon I'll let him tell you. Seems that's what he wants. Why was the colonel's house shut up? The colonel died, Fred said. Back weeks ago, just after you went away, died in his sleep. He were 88 years old. Why didn't you tell me? I quite, I'd quite liked the colonel. Fred looked uncomfortable. Uh, well, I didn't think of it right off. It wasn't a tragedy, an old man passing. Then the other came right on the heels. Fred paused. Stefan said he's coming to see you tonight. I nodded. That's good, Fred said. He'll tell you himself. Couldn't get any more out of him. I untacked butter, rubbed him down, and put him back in the stall with fresh water and hay. Then I went down the row of stalls. Maggie's pony, Ivy, Jonathan's beautiful horse, Oban, Lord and Lady Thornton's hunters, checking water buckets and giving out hay. I got out a wheelbarrow and a pitchfork. I could use a wheelbarrow now that I had two good feet, but Fred took them away from me. That's enough for your first day, he said. I'll be back tomorrow, I said, unless you need me tonight. I'm ready to work hard. If I learned everything Fred could teach me, perhaps I could get a paying job in the stable when I was a little older. It wasn't impossible. You'll not push yourself, Fred said. Fred, I grinned at him. I have to. Susan thought we should have our tea with Stefan. She and Jamie had gone shopping. She made fish paste sandwiches. Yum. And brewed a fresh pot of tea, and we set the little table for four. 
When Stefan came in, he was carrying a paper bag. He looked down at the table, not smiling. He sat down. Jamie plopped into the chair beside him. How's Billy? Billy, Stefan's little brother, was Jamie's best friend. Stefan swallowed. He started to speak. He choked, swallowed, and tried again. He tried two or three more times before his mouth would make the words. Then he said, dead. Ooh, I was not expecting that to happen. So I can only imagine right now how Jamie's going to be feeling after this. We're going to stop right there, though. Yeah. Sad chapter. Ooh.